had to shoot my video from the car today, but as uh, you may know, I'm trying to do 100 days, sorry, a year straight of uh, making a video every day, so got to make it work. So uh, I was listening to a podcast today about climate change, and it was um, about kind of the history of climate change and the idea that even, you know, all the way back to the, to the founding fathers of the U.S. and prior, but that was kind of the point they picked, um, talked about climate change and had views of it. And um, interestingly, you know, you go back to the 1700s, 1800s, you know, they kind of went up through the, through the, through the um, centuries. As you would imagine, there, there were some views that were popular at the time that now are laughable and make no sense, right? Thomas Jefferson was an example who thought that um, if they cut down all the trees, that would make the climate warmer and would make the U.S. a better climate. So that was, that was something important for him that he wanted to do and I guess was you know, a policy of his. And, he, and there was some science behind it. Uh, seemingly at the time. Um, there was also, um, you know, some religious aspect to it where if you, if you behaved better, right, if, if God wasn't mad, the, the, the climate would be better, which, you know, as you might imagine at that time had carried a little more weight. Um, there was even the idea that um, as, you, as you cleared land, as you cultivated land and you farmed it more, um, that brought better weather. Um, that, brought, that brought a better climate. You wouldn't get as severe of weather. Um, and, and these were things that were really um, not necessarily widely, widely believed, but they were credible views of the time. And uh, aside from just the obvious entertainment of that, it made, it made me think of something that I think of often when it comes to issues like climate change, where it's so divisive and people are so polarized on it. Um, it's this point that, you know, there, there's periods in time in which the smartest people in the world, or at least some of the smartest people in the world, believe things that are now ludicrous, that are now absurd. Like if we cut down all the trees, the, you know, it'll get warmer. Um, like if we farm the land, magically the weather will get better. Um, like that the earth is flat. All these different ideas at different points, you can go on and on, right? Different points in times in which they seemed super legitimate. And now we know they're ridiculous. I say that though because I think that it's the credibility point. It's the being honest with yourself, about yourself, about your quote unquote side, even though in the moment, it feels like it hurts your case or it might not get you where you want to go, right? Even if in the moment it feels like, well, I could sacrifice a bit of truth on this for, for simplicity, whatever it is, right? This, this certainty that comes with that, or at least this perceived certainty that this is definitely what it is. You might be right. You very well might be right. You're probably right, right? When it comes to climate change, it seems really, really clear that there's issues that we, that we want to address, but that degree of certainty, that unwillingness to be consistent in the application and, and, and be credible in it, right? It's possible. It's possible that 100 years from now, 200 years from now, 1,000 years from now, people look back and say, oh, they had it so wrong. Is it likely? No, it's not likely, but it's possible. We have to entertain the possibility of that. Not because we need to be nice to other people, not because it's just some principal thing, because if your objective is to change people's minds, who you need to change to get to your objective, you want to do it the most effective way. You want to do it the most optimal way. And you're just giving them too much of a cognitive out in this. When you come with certainty and you say, there's no doubt about it and you're adamant and you're militant and you demand things that you, you say are definitely true, when there's at least slivers of, of possibilities of, well, maybe, maybe that's wrong though. Maybe this was natural. Maybe this happens. Maybe the climate of the earth always changes and there's always different reasons for it. And this time it happens to be humans, right? You can go all sorts of different directions. Maybe it's something completely different than we even understand at this point in time. We, we don't know. That's just the reality. We can put probability on it and we should, and we should act based on that, based on the best information. But again, if you're trying to talk to other people who see it a different way, when you give them that cognitive out that you don't seem to be being reasonable, that you don't seem to be being consistent or credible and just being honest about it and, and how science works, <laughs> that sometimes we think we know something, but we don't. And that's possible here, even though not likely. Every time you do that, that gives them the out to say, ah, I don't even have to listen to them. They're not reasonable. There's no point in even considering it. Um, this is just what they do. There's, there's some political behind it. Whatever it is, you give them that out more so, right? And you might say, well, they're looking for it anyway. They'll take it anyway. Maybe some people for sure, but there's some reasonable, more reasonable, more rational people there. There's people that if you can really speak to them in a logical way, big L logical, the likelihood that you can get them to understand and see it goes up significantly. And I think that's something you have to consider.